All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Nevada State College State of the College Address. We're excited you're here. Please, please rise for our national anthem, which will be sung by multiple award-winning jazz and R&B artist, Janique Nina. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the home of the brave. All right, you are welcome to take your seats. Good morning, everyone. My name is Erin Keller, and I serve as the Vice President for Advancement here at Nevada State College. Thank you again, Janique. That was absolutely beautiful. It is my privilege to welcome a full house room in addition to everyone on live stream to today's State of the College address. We are really excited to share a reflection of the college's successes in the last year and give you a sneak peek to what the bright future looks like for Nevada State. We have a whole bunch of dignitaries in the room also on live stream and this is what we do every time so we're gonna we're gonna mix this up a little bit. So here's what I'm calling the long applause. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start with a name. We're all gonna start clapping. We're gonna keep clapping while I keep going through names, all right? We're just gonna clap through it. Now, I was told that you don't do woos until after five, but if somebody feels like they need to woo, feel free to woo when their name is called. I'm good with that. All right, we ready? Everybody got it? Good, okay. From the Nevada System of Higher Education Board of Regents, Vice Chair Joseph Arascada, Regent Amy Carvalho, Regent Jeffrey Downs, yes, woo, yes. Representing, representing Senator Cortez Masto's office, Eliza Galamidi. State Senator Dr. Carrie Buck is here. Assemblywoman Chandra Summers Armstrong. State Superintendent Joan Ebert. Deputy Superintendent Jonathan Moore and Interim Chief Strategy Officer Christopher Huffman, all from the State Board of Education. The first time I get to say it, Henderson Mayor Michelle Romeo. There you go, that's the woo we want to hear. Also from the City of Henderson, our dear friend, City Manager uh, Richard Derrick, Assistant City Manager Stephanie Garcia Voss, Assistant City Manager Robert Herr, and CFO Jim McIntosh. Boulder City Mayor and former State Senator Joe Hardy. CCSD in the house, Dr. Jesus Jaram. We have a lovely group of people from the Nevada State College Foundation here. Chair Sonia DeBonis, Finance and Audit Chair Online Nicole Jones, former Chair Glenn Christensen, and Emeritus Board Member and my dear friend Miss Hannah Brown. 
We have so, 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 so many community people in the room. I wish I could spend all the time introducing them. We're so grateful you're here. From our nonprofit partners like the Fulfillment Fund, to our corporate partners, to our chamber partners, to our community leaders that support us, so grateful for all the work you do with us. We are excited to partner again in 2023. And finally, the heart and soul of Nevada State College. There are an absolute ton of faculty, staff, students, and alumni in the room and online. Thank you for all that we do. Thank you for all that you do. All right, we're done with it, guys. Yay, final clap. Yeah. And we can't see who's on the live stream, but we know that you're there. Thank you so much for joining us as well. It has been an absolute joy to have a front row seat into the magic that is Dr. Darian Pollard. From her first day on campus in August of 21 till today, President Pollard has brought an energy to our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and our community with every interaction she makes. She is a dynamic leader, she is a mentor to many of us, and she is an academic rock star. Her energy has helped the Nevada State community gain an even stronger sense of pride, a newfound spirit, if you will. So we thought, what better way to introduce her second State of the College address is to have her come with our newly created Spirit Squad. So with our Spirit Squad, please welcome the eighth president of Nevada State College, Dr. Darian Pollard. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. If that didn't wake you up, I don't know what will. They, they offered me an opportunity to perform with them. <laughs> and I suggested that my rhythm is not one that would contribute thoughtfully to the uh, plan. So we decided for me just to cheer from the side. But let's give it up again for those students, please. <clears throat> Well, good morning and welcome to my second annual State of the College Address. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to Nevada State College and those of you who are visiting for your first time, I hope that you will come back often. And for those of you who have been here many times and know exactly who we are, it is so welcome to have you here with us today. And I see many people returning to the campus. I've got to uh, greet several of you this morning. Thank you for choosing to be a part of this story of Nevada State College. Now, of course, what's really important to me uh, at the heart of the work we do are our students. So I really want to acknowledge our students and our faculty and our staff who are here today, as well as our outstanding events and facilities teams who without their help, this event would not have been possible. So from the deepest parts of me, let me say thank you, thank you, thank you at the top of this speech. I also want to welcome our virtual audience. I want to thank you for tuning in and choosing to be a part of this. I already got texts from people saying, well, am I going to get a shout out? And I said, we got you later, don't worry. So we're very grateful to you all for uh, chiming in. And I want to thank so many of our community partners who joined us today, as well as our elected officials who chose to be a part of this space here. It has been an honor and a privilege to lead this institution in this state and in this moment. There is no other institution like Nevada State College in the state of Nevada. We're not only the newest college or university in the state, but we're also the only four-year institution with a teaching mission. For us, being the new kid on the block certainly comes with some challenges, but I will share with you, it means that we can't and we choose not to rely on tradition but it also comes with great opportunities. We get to make our own history, and we get to define and redefine and perhaps design and redesign our story right now, even as it is being crafted. 
Now, as you know, Nevada State College turns 20 years old this year. So this year, we're taking time to celebrate the college's history and its achievements. The vision for Nevada State College started with a kitchen table conversation among Henderson leaders in 1998, some of who are in this room today. In 1998 was the same year that the Bellagio opened its doors, ushering in a new era of tourism on the Las Vegas Strip, skyrocketing our population. Suddenly, Southern Nevada needed teachers, and lots of them. With community support, plans started moving to launch a four-year state college in Henderson. Last year, during my first State of the College address, we explored the profound purpose of Nevada State and why we were created. Our purpose is to serve the new majority of students who attend higher education today. Well, while we ultimately expand opportunities, certainly we're doing so to move into the middle class and to build the economy of the state. This year, I think we can go deeper and ask ourselves much more robustly, after 20 years, have we lived up to this profound and yet sometimes challenging purpose? Believe it or not, it's been almost a year and a half since I started in this role. And in that time, I've built so many wonderful relationships with so many of you in the room and those of you who are not even in the room. I had some time to reflect over the holiday season. And like many of you, I want to offer a few observations about my time as president as we move into this new year, as we think about the purpose of Nevada State College. First and foremost, those of you who know me know that gratitude is indeed my religion. And I say this intently, so I'm grateful for our people at Nevada State, our people who show up to work every day to make Nevada State what it is and to do their jobs with tremendous competence and oftentimes doing it with grace when required. Gratitude for our students who call out to us to do the higher work that's necessary, for their grit, for their determination that they show on a daily basis by choosing to pursue their higher educational goals. And of course, to our community, for which over the last year and a half has graciously welcomed me. Second, I want to acknowledge that if we're going to change the trajectory of education for our state, we're going to have to change our current patterns of thought. Now, what does this really mean? Our economy is changing. Work is changing. Education is changing. And of course, our world is changing. Uh, I was struck by all of the wonderful media that we saw last week when CES was here, which I didn't even know what that was. I now as a new Vegas person, now I understand what that is and why it's such a big deal. Uh, the most innovative and technology-rich environment was on display right here in our backyard. And to compete, to have the quality of life that we want to have, we're going to need to change our pattern of thought and focus on creating a knowledge economy in our region. Third, as I said at last year's uh, commencement, and I'll say it again, Nevada State is no longer an experiment. You can look at our data, you can look at our metrics, you can look at our trajectory and know this, that we are here to stay. In 20 years, we've proven the essential need for a teacher's focus mid-tier institution. In fact, I would argue that our mission and urgency around it had never been more relevant or necessary to this region and to our state. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, our commitment to our students remains the same. It's a commitment to compassion and to designing the college experience around them and not around us. We have a welcoming community to foster individual growth and development for our students. Now, many of you may know that my career started in higher education as an English professor. So if you allow me, I need to indulge, if you don't mind, for just a bit and talk a little bit about Aristotle. Uh, I believe Nevada State leads with his heart. And as the philosopher once said, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. We all play a role in building our community. We know that over 80% of our students at Nevada State College stay right here in this community. So what kind of person is drawn to Nevada State? 
What kind of person will graduate from this institution? What type of person will teach and work at this institution? We all play a role in this community. And we know that I've noticed that there is a special ethos that runs through the flavor of Nevada State. There's a special type of faculty member and staff member and student that is drawn to this institution. It's a person that is not afraid to bring their full self to their experience. And I think that's because Nevada State is a place where you can be you. And you can become the person who leads with both your head and your heart. Many can teach you skills and some can educate your mind, but what I believe Nevada State is called to do is to help our students find their purpose. So after a year and a half, I can say truly that our institution is strong and it's strong because each of every one of you in this room and beyond. Now in 2022, we went deeper. We delivered on our promise and we worked to meet our core academic goals. We worked to create educational philosophy statement to align key aspects of our emerging institution. This statement seeks to capture the essence of how we will provide excellent and distinctive educational experiences at Nevada State. In short, this philosophy will chart the course of our institutional activities moving forward. And I look forward to the finalization of that document uh, and sharing more in the coming months. We've also made tremendous progress in closing equity gaps at Nevada State. For the last three years, retention rates for first generation students at Nevada State are actually higher than retention rates of non-first generation students. Moreover, retention rates for Hispanic and African American students either meet or exceed overall retention rates of all students at Nevada State. But our work around equity is not over. We also recently were selected by the American Association of State Colleges and Universities to begin a multi-year project that aims to reduce equity gaps in student success. It is our hope that we can continue to become a model institution for our work in this area nationally. We continue to deliver on expanding access through dual credit. Amazingly, former dual credit grad graduate students now account for 9.5% of our total headcount here at Nevada State and almost 12.5% of our credit hours. These students are predominantly diverse and first generation and a very large number receive Pell Grants making them a reflection of both our mission and the new majority of students attending higher education in this country. We've also continued to expand our degree offerings, creating a new bachelor's degree in chemistry and are close to the approval of a second graduate level degree, education specialist by the Northwest Commission, our accrediting body. The education specialist degree in school psychology is anticipated to begin in 2024. This degree is possible in large parts thanks to a grant from our friends at the Clark County School District, which provided funding for a full-time faculty member. Let me pause and tell you a little story about how this works, though. Uh, literally sitting in my office one day, after what had been a challenging day for both of us, uh, Jesus and I were having a conversation, and we talked about the crisis we were seeing in mental health and our students, both at the secondary and post-secondary level. We talked about the need to create both short-term investments and long-term investments. And I said, but I got a problem. I said, I have this great program that we want to develop. I don't have funding yet for a scholar, for a faculty member. He said, how can I help you? That's what friendship is about. It's about relationships and it's about the greater good of this community. So we're grateful that this joint effort will help our state to build a stronger pipeline of mental health professionals. Thank you, Jesus, for that work. Our School of Nursing continues to excel. In fact, when you think of nursing in Nevada, you should be thinking of Nevada State College. Using the most recent data, 47% of all NCHI bachelor prepared nurses graduated from Nevada State. Yes, nearly half. 
But here's the other part about this. Half of our nurses are also first-generation college students. And 75% of nursing students identify as students of color. So let's not forget about that. In our humanities, our School of Liberal Arts and Sciences is now the Liberal Arts, Sciences, and Business School. We're placing a greater emphasis on our business program and have also launched a business advisory council. This council, along with our executive and residence program, is a part of a larger effort to significantly increase the business department's outreach to Las Vegas business community. LSA, LASB also continues to host its Dean School Justice Series, featuring important speakers on relevant topics around equity, diversity, and inclusion. Nathaniel King, our Dean of the Library, also continued his work to save students millions of dollars in textbook fees. Since 2017, students have saved an estimated $1.7 million in textbook costs. And as of this year, 40% of our full-time instructors have participated in a program and redesigned their courses, yes, redesigned their courses in coordination with the library by converting their paid textbooks to open educational resources, dramatically reducing the cost of instructional materials for our students. That deserves a hand clap. Dr. Stephanie Coleman, our Vice President of Student Affairs, has worked to revamp new student orientation to include first-year Friday events that bring together all first-year students. And we've also expanded our weekend services on Saturdays for students who cannot uh, attend or visit departments or participate in programming during the week. This initiative has helped to create even a deeper sense of belonging and friendships for our students that turn into our family here at Nevada State. And we continue to make progress on exploring a pathway for athletics at Nevada State. Athletics help create, and I saw a whole bunch of people nodding at that. <laughs> athletics help create a deeper sense of community, affinity to campus, and are an important component of individual student development. We hope to have an announcement soon enough on the progress toward a potential athletics program here at Nevada State. And then finally, last September, our Board of Regents approved an addendum to our strategic plan. Our Provost Vicki Shield worked so thoughtfully to help update our plan in response to new insights gained through the pandemic. The events of the last three years are events that we don't get to ignore. And we worked and we think about how this affected our teaching, how it affected the very way in which we do our work, and who we are, but we know it did not change us. We we're greater informed about who we are. Our new strategic plan ensures we continue to be responsive to our students, regardless of how or where they may learn, and how our students show up on our campus. Equity, we believe, is about allowing our students to show up fully on our campus the way they are and meeting them where they are. As I am so often reminded by Dean Pothoff, we are building a college. So in addition to strengthening our academic core, we're also securing the necessary funding for our campus infrastructure. Thanks to Vice President of Advancement, Aaron Keller, our fundraising efforts are off to an incredibly strong start. We're halfway through the fiscal year in 2023, and we've already raised as much as we did in the previous year. We've been able to secure a named sponsorship for every classroom in our new Christians in Education building, many of which were sponsored by our very own faculty and staff. The foundation has also continued its work building a student emergency aid fund with Haas Automotive stepping up to support that fund. Our foundation has also set a goal of creating 20 new endowments for our 20th anniversary, and I would not be the chief fundraiser of the institution if I did not invite you to take an opportunity <laughs> to help be a part of that. We're on our way to reaching this goal about halfway including our first ever alumni created endowment. We've had a strong year for grants as well. 
For the first time, Nevada State has award, was awarded the prestigious McNair Scholarship Award for $1.3 million. <laughs> Nevada State is the only, the third NCHI institution to obtain this grant, which will pave the pathway for first-generation students to enter and complete graduate education programs. And this year was another big year for Nevada State for bringing in federal funds. With the work of our federal congressional delegation, huge shout out to them, Nevada State received over $7 million in appropriations. <laughs> the funds will provide hiring incentives and loan forgiveness for our nursing faculty. We also receive funds to establish a workforce education training center in the community. And our School of Education is going to use part of these federal funds to create a mental health clinic. The clinic will serve our community and reduce the load on CCSD mental health by providers by decreasing the wait time for families seeking mental health evaluations and support. It will also serve as a training facility for our Nevada State students preparing to become school psychologists. In just the last two years, Nevada State has received $13 million in federal funds through grants thanks to the tireless work and cooperation of our federal delegation and our internal team who are so thoughtful about how we ask and being very strategic about what we ask for. Capacity is important. We don't want to ask for something we can't deliver upon. And more importantly, we know partnerships are essential to the future of this organization. In addition to building our campus, we want to make sure that you can get to campus. That is why I am so pleased to announce that thanks to support from our Nevada legislature using ARPA funds, the campus commuter pilot program will return in time for the next school year. <laughs> Starting in the fall of 2023, our transportation initiative with the College of Southern Nevada will return, offering students additional transportation options at no cost for the entire 22, 23, and 24 school year. But wait, there's more. I'm also very happy to announce another special project. Uh, thanks to a $3 million grant from CCSD, Nevada State is now able to cover the total cost of tuition and fee charges for all students enrolled in teacher education programs for the entire year. Yeah. Let me say that again for the people in the back. That's all cost for all education students for the entire year. In fact, over $1 million has already been applied to student accounts for the spring semester, serving over 350 students. This grant has the potential to add a second year and another $3 million for a total of $6 million. Our future endeavors, yes. Our future educators should not have to bear the financial burden while teaching the next generation. I want to thank Superintendent Jara, the CCSD Board of Trustees, and everyone at the district for this tremendous support. And let me also say our internal team. Um, I, I have a, a running, how shall I say it, debate with a number of people who say, how come you all just can't produce more teachers? Why don't you just want to produce more teachers, right, superintendent? They say that, and I, I say, you can't make somebody be a teacher. It's not like the draft. I can't draft them, right? <laughs> but what we need to do is incentivize, right? We need to figure out how to do that. We have to change the script on the environments which they go in to teach. We have to talk about governance issues. Yeah, I know I went off scripts, Anthony. But this is what we're talking about right now, that the environment, this is a public reckoning we're having right now. If people are not choosing to go into teaching, it's not because they don't love kids. It's not because they don't recognize the value of public education. We have a principal we got in, in the room right now. We know what education is about, but we have to talk about the environment in which we thrust them in to do the work. I'm going to stop and go back on script.
We've also taken steps this year to improve our physical campus footprint and the infrastructure. Uh, I want to thank Vice, Senior Vice President Kevin Butler and his team for everything they've done this year in the space. We've updated our campus master plan for the first time since 2010. And let me just do a special shout out. I see uh, Moreland Greenwood here. Uh, where'd he go? There he is. For those of you who don't know Moreland, he's a former NFL player and has been involved in the development and personal improvement of diverse populations in our community. If you ever want to hear a great story, just hear his own story of how he chose and came to education. But his foundation, uh, the Moreland Greenwood Foundation, is also working with us on the proposed MG52 Center, which would create an integrated athletic special events and youth ed development center on our campus. This center, yeah. <laughs> this center would also offer an 8,500 seating capacity venue for things like indoor football, soccer, basketball, and other youth sports. And we plan to be talking more about this with the Board of Regents at its March meeting. And we're so excited about this opportunity and looking forward to this partnership. Thank you, Marilyn, for your support. As we grow our campus, we also continue to be mindful of our sustainability efforts. In 2022, Nevada State increased its commitment to environmental sustainability and justice and became a member of the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Education. Our master plan includes explicit sustainability initiatives, and we're looking at additional ways to measure and track this. Finally, we're growing new international alliances. We sign memorandums of understanding with the University of Derby and England and Tech Millennial University in Monterey, Mexico. Each alliance allows us to explore opportunities on how we may work more closely together in the future in collaboration around lifelong learning programs, the exchange of students, pathways around teaching and nursing, as well as the creative arts. We are tremendously excited about what these opportunities may mean for our region in the future. Now, despite all of these successes in this past year, we don't get to ignore the challenges that we face. Funding is always a challenge. We're still dealing with the implications of, of a pandemic. Let me say the intersection of multiple pandemics. We know that COVID has had a disproportional impact on our transfer students, our parenting students, and our first generation students. Uh, our institutional research area and enrollment, they have done phenomenal work in actually studying and pinpointing where we are seeing the most erosion in enrollment, and those are the populations. And we will meet and continue to meet these students where they are and look at robust services and resources to support them. It's easy, though, to get mired in the negative, to get hypnotized by the complexity of it all. To make 2023 a year of opportunity, we have to rise above the complexity of our challenges and make it count. The legislative session begins next month. We will have to continue advocating for policies and resources that help our students as well as meaningfully deal with the issue of employee benefits and compensation. I'm gonna say that again. I plan to be at the forefront with our regents and our system in talking about the impact. Uh, cost of living has changed in this region. The lived experiences of our employees have changed. When I have employees talking to me about why they have to share rides, why they're looking at other sources of income, working two and three jobs. I had an employee, bless her heart, talk to me about how there are members of her family who are giving plasma on a regular basis to supplement their income. That's a travesty. We can't continue in that space. So yes, we will be talking about these issues and making the case around compensation for our employees. We also know that speaking of these types of issues are gonna be important for our students as well. And we say this because we know that Nevada State matters. It matters in this community, and it matters in this state. We're going to continue to support the renaming of Nevada State College to Nevada State University. <laughs> In 
In addition to the data showing an increase in enrollment for colleges that rename themselves to university, it's time for our students to get the recognition of the quality of education that they have earned at this institution. It's time for our students to enter the job market without having to explain to their employers that they did not literally, a student sat in the office and explained this to me, she has a nursing degree, a bachelor's degree from this institution and has to explain to potential employers that it is not an associate's degree, it is a bachelor's degree because they see college and assume it is a two-year institution. I understand that narrative that's very important and it is in time for us to acknowledge that our state must reposition its narrative around higher education. Um, we have to widen participation and recognize that higher education is both a public good and a private good. I have never seen a state suffer from having too many colleges or universities in it. And because of this, let me say this as well, regardless if we're called Nevada State College or Nevada State University, one thing is clear, we will continue to put state first in the work that we do. We will always be <laughs> responsive to the needs of the state of Nevada to grow our workforce and to prepare more teachers and nurses and business leaders more people who will step into the leadership roles of this community. Our job is to build and rebuild our institution as necessary, to design and redesign so that we can do our part to unlock the full potential of our state. Another university is going to help our state reach its full potential and it's time that we act upon it. Our college is poised for the future because of each of you. Those of you who are in this room, those of you who are watching, those of you who are even thinking about what Nevada State's potential is. Our organization is only as strong as the people who are part of it. Our campus has fostered a culture of inclusion that allows you to be yourself. So don't just stop doing that. We want you to be bold. We want you to be great. We don't want you to just be great, though. We want you to keep being you. My vision for Nevada State has never been bolder, and my confidence in Nevada State has never been greater. And together, I know that we will make this next year count. I want to thank you all for your support and dedication to Nevada State. I encourage each of you to continue getting involved in supporting the college in ways that you can. Each of you is playing a crucial role in the narrative and the success of this institution and the students who are paving the way for the future of our community. 80% of Nevada State students and graduates continue to live in this community. I happen to believe then that we are sure bet in terms of how one wants to shape the future of this community. Everything that we do at Nevada State is about our students. So I want to turn the spotlight back on our students. It's easy for a college president to give a state of the college. It's easy for a college president to speak. Uh, but I believe that the most important voice that you're going to hear is the voice that's coming next it's from our students. I'd like to introduce you to Zanai Smith, a first-generation student at Nevada State who has a remarkable story. Please welcome and come to the stage. Thank you, President Pollard, for the introduction. So oftentimes when I'm given the opportunity to speak, I, choose, I often opt out and I choose to be the listener. However, after deep thought, I knew that if I never told my story, others that have similar backgrounds as me would not know that they too can go to college and reach any goals that they set for themselves. Nevada State has allowed me to be my authentic self and instilled the confidence in me to speak my truth. So allow me to introduce myself. My name is Denai Smith and I'm a first generation college student from North Las Vegas, Nevada. I started preschool at the age of four in a Head Start program 
that was only two classrooms. Many of you may not know, but to attend Head Start, you must come from a low-income family or exhibit some type of financial need. Growing up, my family did experience some financial hardships. For as long as I can remember, we were dependent upon government assistance. But before we were in these programs, my father was the breadwinner of the family, while my mother was stayed home to care for their four young children. Sorry. However, thank you. However, my father was um, diagnosed with a chronic illness, and over time, he was no longer able to work. There have been times throughout my life where my siblings and I had to step up to help at home and to help with my father. There have been many calls to the paramedics, visits to the hospital to see dad, and many days of uncertainty of what tomorrow would bring to my life. But despite my financial hardships and having to help at home, my parents have always instilled to me that education was important and that your knowledge is something that cannot be taken away from you. I attended schools within CCSD up until my junior year of high school, where with, with the support of my parents, I decided to enroll in Nevada State High School, where I was able to earn free college credits. This was my stepping stone into my, life, my next step in life, college. I always knew that I was going to go to college, but the answer that I needed question, I mean the question that I needed answers to was where. Upon graduating high school, I had over 25 college acceptances, many of which came with scholarships. <laughs> so I was originally set on attending Arizona State University to study aviation so I could become a pilot. <laughs> But before, over the summer, before my move-in date, I was uncertain if ASU would be for me, and I was not ready to leave home. I chose to stay and needed to explore what my options were. Thanks to my, one of my mentors and former assemblywoman, Casina Douglas Boone, I was pointed in the direction of Nevada State College. I did not know much about the college, but I knew that it would be more affordable and that they had brand new dorms. <laughs> That's really what sold me, guys. <laughs> um, so I finished my application late in the summer, and I enrolled in with the major of undecided. For my first year on campus, I was undecided on a lot of things, like what I would study, what career path I would go into, where I belonged on campus, and how long I would be here. With time and guidance, I was able to find answers to these questions. So with the help of career services on campus, I was able to decide that I wanted to study business, and with my love of sports, I chose the new sports business concentration. Through Sankofa, I was able to be connected with my mentors, Alicia and Bailey, and I now work under their guidance as a RISE Peer Ambassador, where I help first-year students with their transition from college, I mean from high school into college, and mentor them throughout their first year. I have found my sense of belonging by joining Nevada State Student Alliance, where I'm currently a junior senator, and also our school's black student organization, where I'm currently the vice president. After obtaining my bachelor's degree, I would like to explore the various opportunities of professional sports teams that are new to our valley. Or come back to work at Nevada State in athletics. <laughs> Thank you. So to the faculty, staff, students, and community members in the room, thank you all for allowing me to share my story with you. Thank you. We get to do that every day, isn't that amazing? Um, I know we have lots of friends in all of our professional sports in town. There's a competition going on. We're gonna work really hard to keep Zanae here, so uh, Raiders, Golden Knights, whoever you are, you need to get started if you want her. So we're gonna keep her here. I have a few quick other welcome, uh, I wanna welcome a few other people in the room. Assemblywoman Shonda Sun Summers Armstrong, State Board of Education Chair Felicia Ortiz, CCSD board member Linda Cavazos is here in the front, and Devlin from NV Energy, a new foundation board member. Thank you, Zanai, so much for that. It was incredible. 
I really want to quickly, very quickly thank every single person who helped make today happen. Every single team member on the advancement team played a part today. We're so excited. Thank you so much. Uh, special thanks to our IT team and our facilities team. For those of you on the live stream, thank you so much and have a nice day. For those of you in person, we have a special treat. We have one more performance from the Spirit Squad. And then I invite you to come out to the foyer and enjoy some breakfast. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a great day.